Um, I will introduce myself a little more when I make my brief intervention. Um, the organizers have asked me to moderate your meetings today, so this morning and this afternoon. So we will start this morning with the presentation of the uh, Greater Caspian Foundation. And uh, we will have an introduction by two members of Integral Petroleum. And then afterwards, I will introduce two project presentations for you. So let me start with asking Maria to take the floor and introduce the foundation to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, so we, uh, we are in the process of the registering, finalizing actually the registration of the Greater Caspian Foundation. So Greater Caspian Foundation uh, is a non-profit organization, a uh, foundation that is created with the purpose of uh, supporting the capital, the human capital of the Caspian region, um, overcoming to support the overcoming of digital divide between the Caspian region and the world, and to support the ecological project in order to keep our planet and Caspian region safe. Uh, we have few objectives. Just a moment. So. So the objectives of the, of the um, Greater Caspian Foundation is to provide opportunities for the Greater Caspian region population in receiving advanced education, to generate ideas, develop and support projects related to the health and longevity of the population, stimulate the development of small and medium-sized enterprises in the field of digital technologies, and support the integration and global division of labor, and supporting the non-profit uh, organizations uh, to, related to the environmental issues. And to participate and bring the expertise to the existing forums uh, in the greater Caspian region, including new mechanisms of the Convention of Legal Status of Caspian Sea. And we, we have already a um, few projects in the framework uh, with different organizations. Uh, we have several projects with the United Nations um, as a stakeholder engagement in collaboration with, with them. They will, uh, they will introduce these projects uh, in a few minutes. Another project is the communication information sharing and col collaboration as well with the United Nations. And um, Caspian Sea Conservation Project in collaboration of University of Leeds that we will as well uh, speak a bit later. Um, a project related to the aqua aquatic ecosystem um, and water preservation in the region uh, with the, in collaboration with the Institute for Environmental Sciences of Geneva. Uh, then we, we have some projects uh, related to the education of, of Generation Z. So as the we have new generation coming right now, so the, the education system should also adapt. And this is a very important issue. So we, as well with collaboration with few universities, we will uh, work on that. And as well, uh, Greater Caspian Foundation uh, will include in, in, in this in its shelf Caspian Week as a platform uh, to promote all this project and to, to um, to increase the visibility of all these projects and reunite people and make the, the people aware of all this project and the importance of, of all this uh, project that Caspian Fund Greater Caspian Foundation uh, will do. And uh, another project that we are as well, uh, we, were, we, we were presenting yesterday is the Caspian Ambassador. It's a social club that reunites the former and actual ambassadors related to the Caspian region around the world who have, uh, who have an interest or still relationship with the region. They know well the region, they, they are inspired by the region and they have very good business correction, con uh, connections around the world. So those people will actually as well help the region to develop, to, to grow and to uh, implement different business projects. So uh, we will, I will now pass the word to my colleague uh, Dmitry Kalinin who is uh, CFO of Integral Petroleum, the founder, uh, the main founder of the Greater Caspian Foundation, 
end of the Caspian week. He will say a few words uh, how this idea uh, actually was born and why Integral Petroleum is doing this. So please, Dmitry. Hello, good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, I think this is a very important subject uh, we are discussing now. Uh, a bit of history. We as a company uh, have always been active on kind of uh, in, in the social area. For years we are supporting a school of art for talented children in Geneva. We are also supporting some educational uh, program or specific people, specific students uh, in, in Caspian region. We also were doing something else and eventually we decided to to do it kind of in the most structured way uh, and started thinking about uh, foundation or something else. Uh, it's actually also required for tax reasons because uh, previously kind of providing help to others, we actually sometimes even had tax problems uh, because uh, for taxation people it's like dividends. Uh, and. and but uh, tax authorities in Switzerland are quite good. You can discuss with them, we, we, we accepted this, but we said, okay, guys, for, for, for now it's fine, but for the future, please do it normally in a structured way. So this was kind of first uh, start. Then we, when we started the project to, cre to create uh, Great Caspian Foundation, we uh, actually screened various projects and we find out that actually there is much more we can do uh, in the region. Uh, our original focus was on the region as a whole rather than on specific country because uh, we are trader and we are trading uh, commodities uh, originated from countries in Caspian area and selling them like in, in Europe, in Asia, everywhere. And to do so, we are providing logistics and we are coming through all these countries. We know people there, we know problems, we know problems with uh, interactions between uh, one country and another country. Uh, so we decided that we can tackle, prob we, we can uh, help uh, only if we, if we work with all participants, uh, various countries, uh, various uh, institutions, corporations, uh, universities, uh, just uh, groups of talented people. So as a result, uh, uh, we have screened projects and we selected several of them, uh, some, some of which are here actually, um, and we started doing foundation. And then second kind of uh, good surprise happened. When we started discussing foundation with our friends, many of them actually said, why, we shouldn't do it just yourself. And now we have also uh, several companies who are willing to, 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 co to co contribute to, to this foundation. Uh, so that's why we would like to present uh, what we are going to do here, so that uh, probably some other participants also would uh, a, propose uh, in our projects, B, uh, participate in funding of existing projects uh, which we have. So basically, uh, I think it was a very good idea to structure our kind of a bit chaotic uh, <laughs> social activity, and I hope uh, this fund will really be successful, because work already started, we're just structuring it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I will open the floor for a discussion, a question and answers after the presentations, if that is okay to you. Um, let, me, uh, let me present myself now to you. Uh, uh, like I said, my name is Fritz Lingemann. I represent the Secretariat of the Framework Convention for the Protection of the Marine Environment of the Caspian Sea. In short, they call it Tehran Convention, named to the city where it was concluded in 2003. Um, this convention was the first legally binding instrument between all five Caspian littoral states. It was hailed by the Secretary General of the United Nations as a major contribution to peace and security in the region. It entered into force on 12th August 2006, which now is being celebrated each year as Caspian Day in the countries. The Tehran Convention is an intergovernmental arrangement serviced by the United Nations. Its implementation regularly figures on the agenda of the Caspian State's presidential summits, most recently the summit on the legal status of the Caspian Sea in August last year in Aktau, Kazakhstan. The Office of the United Nations Environment Programme in Geneva has been designated to provide for Secretariat of the Convention until the parties have agreed on an institutional setting in the region. I will make a more detailed presentation on the Convention and its workings during the panel on environment later this day. 
We have followed the development process of the Greater Caspian Foundation and highly welcome its establishment. The environmental objectives of the Foundation coincide with those of the Convention and its structure and target groups complement the intergovernmental process which we represent. It is gratifying that we are already succeeding in developing two collaborative projects in areas which are essential for the preservation of the marine environment but are often not seen as a first priority by governments, namely biodiversity conservation and stakeholder engagement. My three colleagues, Simon Goodman and Matthias Benko, will briefly introduce uh, the projects to you. I congratulate you with the launching of the Greater Caspian Foundation and I look forward to a long-lasting collaboration in promoting our common objective to increase attention and mobilize support for the preservation of the environment of the Caspian Sea region. So with your permission, I first now ask Simon Goodman to make his presentation. After that, um, Matthias Benko. And after that, I will open the floor for some exchanges. Okay, thank you, Fritz. Uh, nice. okay, so I'm Dr. Simon Goodman from um, the University of Leeds in the UK. Um, and I um, lead a research group there where we use a, a range of approaches from genomics through to satellite telemetry to study um, wild species and to understand more about their basic biology. And then we use that knowledge in order to do conservation um, more effectively. So I've been um, leading a research program in the Caspian Sea for more than 15 years now and we have partners in all of the Caspian countries um, who work with us um, on the basic research which kind of um, underpins what we're talking about today. Um, I've also worked as a scientific advisor to the Caspian Environment Programme um, and also advise um, several um, companies operating in the Caspian um, such as Agit Casio, NCOC and Tengiz um, Chevroil as well. And so what I'll talk about today is rather the details of the research that we've done. It's more about the bigger picture of what some of the conservation issues are for Caspian seals and biodiversity more generally in, in, in the Caspian, and what some of the strategies might be for how we can try and bring um, more sustainable approaches to biodiversity and conservation to the region. So, as you know, the Caspian Sea is the largest landlocked body of water on the planet. There are around 11 million people um, who live um, around the shores of, of, of the Caspian Sea. And the Caspian's also home to some very important biodiversity, including Caspian seals. Um, although um, the Caspian does have um, environmental issues and it's very important that we consider those because fundamentally um, human well-being and economic activity um, depends on, 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 on biodiversity. So um, at the start of the 20th century the Caspian Sea was one of the most productive water bodies on the planet. It had giant sturgeon, um, hugely productive fisheries and a seal population that numbered in the millions. Caviar was so plentiful that it was literally given away. However, the Caspian has a history of environmental problems dating back more than 100 years. And now that huge productivity that used to be there in the Caspian is just a shadow of its former self. Um, four of the five species of sturgeon in the Caspian are on the brink of extinction pretty much all of the commercial fisheries are severely depleted. And these issues have been driven by um, factors such as habitat degradation, um, over-extraction of biological resources, and, and climate change. So that's a familiar story um, the world over. The Caspian seal has been subject to commercial harvesting since at least um, the 18th century. So on, the, um, on, on that graph there we have a, a plot of um, seal harvest records um, dating back to 1868. 
So during that period through the 20th century, the peak takes of seals um, were in the hundreds of thousands. And it was this unsustainable hunting of seals through the 20th century which was the main cause of the decline um, of Caspian seals to where we are now. Um, we can use those hunting statistics to reconstruct the past population demography um, in conjunction with modern aerial surveys of the population. So in doing that, we can estimate that at the start of the 20th century, um, there would have been more than a million Caspian seals. Um, and now, based on our um, aerial survey results, that's declined by more than 90%, and the current population is probably less than 160,000. So because of that massive population decline and the many ongoing um, threats to Caspian seals, in 2008, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature um, listed Caspian seals as endangered. So there's a massive um, human footprint on um, the Caspian Sea. That comes from all of the human activities that are going on, and, but particularly um, urban and, and, and industrial development. Um, and also the extraction of biological resources through fishing and, and so on. But despite those environmental issues that are there, and some of them are, are very serious, it's really important to understand and emphasise that humans have agency over those issues. Um, there are things that are in our direct control, and if we choose to, and if we have the political will and put the resources there, um, we can do something about it. So a healthy Caspian seal population, or a healthy Caspian um, ecosystem, is crucial um, for human well-being and, and economic activity. To try and put that in some context, we just have to think of the example of the neighbouring Aral Sea. So that the drying up of the, of the Aral Sea was absolutely catastrophic for human health and economic activity in that area. Therefore, conservation of Caspian biodiversity is not just about the preservation of and survival of individual species, but it's about ensuring the sustainability um, and future of the people and the communities that live around the Caspian Sea. And that applies to millions of people. As a top predator, um, Caspian seals are central to the robust functioning of the Caspian Sea ecosystem and the ecosystem services that that provides to people. If we look at other marine ecosystems where top predators have been lost from those systems, it's led to very serious problems such as um, loss of diversity and simplification in those ecosystems. That in turn makes those ecosystems much less productive and much less resilient to um, other external um, changes. Caspian seals are a key um, umbrella species and through conserving Caspian seals and their habitats, that will also serve to protect many other aspects um, of, of Caspian biodiversity. So through the research programme that we've been running for the last 15 years or so, we've now got a pretty good understanding of what the threats are um, for Caspian seals. So at the moment, those include um, human-driven mortality, um, particularly um, mortality that comes from bycatch in, in illegal fisheries. So that picture on the left-hand side there, that's more than 25 seals that have been caught um, in, a, in, a, in a ghost net that's, um, that was laid by fishermen who were um, poaching for sturgeon. Um, the other key um, issue is to protect the crucial habitats for, for, for Caspian seals. Um, um, and we need to protect those against habitat loss and degradation. And then there are other issues such as invasive species, um, such as the comb jellyfish Nemiopsis, um, Nemiopsis ladii. Um, so that's a, um, a jellyfish that um, preys on, on, on plankton in the Caspian ecosystem, and so it affects the structure of the Caspian food webs. Um, in the past, there have been mass mortalities of seals due to canine distemper virus. Um, and then there are other kind of longer term issues um, such as climate change. So Caspian seals are, are, are an ice breeding species. They breed on the ice sheet that forms in the northern part of the Caspian each winter. And so the projections, um, if we go forwards to the end of this century, point to 
um, much less extensive ice cover and more unpredictability in the ice. And so that's got a lot of potential to impact on the um, breeding of the seal population. In terms of conservation priorities, there's a really urgent need to take action on um, the bycatch from illegal fishing um, and safeguarding um, the critical habitats. So this illegal um, fishing, which is driven by poaching for sturgeon, um, results in the deaths of many thousands of seals um, uh, each year. And that's a, an unsustainable rate. It's contributing to an ongoing decline in the seal population. Um, and it's not just about the accidental catching of, um, of, of seals. Now fishermen are actively using products that they get from seals, such as the seal fur and the blubber, which they turn into seal oil, which is used as a medicinal tonic. Um, and so because of the scarcity of sturgeon now, um, some fishermen are actively targeting seals um, for those products. In terms of, of, of habitats, we need to ensure that we conserve habitats that apply to all aspects of the life history of seals, uh, from breeding grounds to areas where they rest and molt and their feeding areas and also their migration routes. If we can take those relatively, um, those steps which are relatively simple in a, in a technical sense in order to achieve, um, well then Caspian seals should make a good, um, should make a good recovery. Typically, seal populations have got high intrinsic growth rates, so they can grow um, at rates of up to 7% a year. And that would mean, if we put these conservation measures in place, the seal population has a good chance of recovery and should be sustainable in the future. So I'll say a little bit more about these kind of bycatch issues. So the bycatch problem is probably one of the most complex issues to try and, 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 and address. Um, it's a socio-economic problem and it's primarily driven by um, poverty and lack of other economic opportunities for um, the people who live in coastal communities. And so it can, it's not something that can just be solved by law enforcement alone. So it's something that's going to need collaboration between ecologists, social scientists and, and the fishing communities themselves in order to find the solutions to this. Um, however, by finding the right kinds of solutions to that illegal fishing activity, it's not just going to help the seal population, it's also going to help those communities because it will give them new economic opportunities and new skills that will make the people who live in those communities um, more prosperous. Um, so this is a, an example of the kind of research outputs that we kind of get from this interdisciplinary research. So recently we've been working in Russia um, using so people with expertise in anthropology and social science. Um, and we talk with um, people in the fishing communities who are involved in fishing. And so from the information they give us, we can apply analytical techniques such as network analysis to understand um, how that illegal fishing activity is structured and what happens in the commodity chains for seal um, products. That in turn um, allows us to understand where they might be potential points of intervention um, that you can use to reduce legal fishing and also help to develop um, alternative livelihoods for the people who are um, involved. So in terms of what we need to do for conservation of Caspian seals, that pathway to conservation and a sustainable seal population is all pretty well mapped out. The knowledge that we need to do that is largely in hand already. So in 2007, a conservation action plan um, was developed through the Caspian Environment Programme, um, and that was signed off by representatives of all the Caspian countries. So that has a, a detailed um, set of action steps um, for what's needed in order to develop conservation for Caspian seals. During the Caspico programme, which was a follow-on from the Caspian Environment programme, there was a focus on development of um, protected areas for Caspian seals, and a, a scoping study was done to identify 
where candidates would be um, to site protected areas for seals, um, and what kind of steps you would need to take to, in order to begin implementation of those protected areas. More recently, through the Convention on Biological Diversity, um, further areas um, that could form protected areas for seals were also identified. However, um, at the moment, there has been no significant action um, on any of these points for conservation of, of Caspian seals, um, and there's been no steps towards development of these protected areas. And none of the Caspian governments have provided any significant funding to contribute towards conservation of Caspian seals. So what kind of vision do we need to have um, to, ha to support sustainable um, conservation for Caspian seals and therefore sustainable biodiversity in um, the Caspian Sea. To a large extent, um, the Caspian countries are still impaired in their um, ability to develop um, the governance and regulatory frameworks um, to do that um, because of the, um, the history of the breakup of the Soviet Union. So what we need to try and focus on is to find ways to facilitate collaboration between the um, Caspian countries on these transboundary um, conservation issues. Um, so that um, includes um, developing natural kind of mechanisms themselves that allow them to collaborate to do that work, to provide the um, educational and, and developmental opportunities for conservation professionals, um, to encourage the Caspian governments to invest um, the funding that's needed to, for all of these activities, and also to facilitate um, economic transitions in coastal communities that will allow them to move away um, from some damaging fishing practices and so on. And um, there's some slow progress starting to happen now as the Tehran Convention um, starts to come into effect, and hopefully that will continue to improve um, into the future. At the moment, I would say that we're at um, a tipping point for the Caspian seal population. If we choose to take action now, we can ensure that there'll be a sustainable Caspian seal population and a rich, healthy um, Caspian ecosystem that will contribute to the livelihoods of coastal communities. If we do not take action now, we risk pushing Caspian seals into a spiral towards extinction and a very much um, impoverished Caspian ecosystem that won't be able to provide those important ecosystem services and um, economic value to people. So if we think about some of the specifics of what we can do to move forwards in terms of a, an actual programme of action, that would be based around sort of pillars based on research to inform some of the activities that we need to undertake towards conservation action um, and also um, capacity building um, to sort of build up the ability of um, institutions and individuals um, to put these um, actions um, into effect. And if we can do that, that provides lots of opportunities for um, sustainable development within the region and also develop um, new skills and increase prosperity um, in the amongst the communities that will be involved in this. So I will finish off by leaving you with this image. So this is a, a picture of a molting aggregation of Caspian seals that was taken in a place in Kazakhstan called Komsomolets Bay back in um, 2011. So I would argue that this must be one of the greatest wildlife spectacles in the world, up there with um, other great wildlife events um, such, such as um, um, the Serengeti um, and so on. Sadly, in recent years, these big aggregations of seals have now disappeared. We no longer see them. However, if we take action now, there's a um, chance to restore this um, um, and bring it back to what it was before. So you can imagine what that site must have looked like 100 years ago when there were around about a million Caspian seals. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you.
Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, it's absolutely clear uh, that uh, that we are very happy and there is a big need for this project. Uh, it has been shown to you. I, I simply want to mention that uh, there are two issues that uh, were mentioned. Uh, the one issue is the impacts of climate change on the Caspian Sea region. We will have a discussion on that this afternoon, as you know, uh, so we should not maybe, maybe elaborate too much on that. Uh, uh, the other uh, issue that is still not solved is uh, um, there is no agreement yet on the on which part of the Caspian Sea is owned by which country. So the legal status issue on the Caspian Sea is still on the agenda of the presidents of the Caspian Sea and it is therefore difficult to determine uh, protected areas because they have geographical coordinates and if you do not know uh, in which country or which countries you are operating you have a problem. So this is, these are two of the issues that are, are, are uh, limiting the possibilities we have, but I think the project is important. With your permission, let's first listen to the other uh, presentation and then we can have some exchange and some questions that you may have. So you go ahead and be short. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, let me start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Mateusz Benko and I work for the Tehran Convention Secretariat with, together with Fritz Schlegelmann. Uh, in order to, be, uh, to give you more time for questions and uh, to have lunch, I will try to be very brief. So without further ado, I, I would like to bring your attention to the screen when I will be presenting a project on stakeholder engagement. As you might know, stakeholder and, and public at large engagement is a cru crucial part for managing any ecosystem. This issue becomes even more important when it comes to rich and fragile ecosystems such as Caspian One. Decisions related to the management of water-related sources furthermore have significant impact on well-being and social economics of the Caspian population. The principle of stakeholder engagement and public at so has been acknowledged by global a forum on Environment and Development, starting from the Earth Summit, which took place in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro. We might ask ourselves a question, why this project is so important? The question is that in the Caspian Sea region, the culture of stakeholder is relatively poor. Given recent economic development, this issue becomes more urgent than ever before. The project will therefore try to assist the countries to create opportunities to change the status quo. As you can see, the objective is therefore to strengthen the engagement of stakeholder and public in the Caspian Sea region to effectively support the sustainable development of the, of the region. The project will consist of three steps. The first one will be conducted at the very early stage of the project, and two subsequent ones will be undertaken in parallel in order to allow more, sub, more frequent interaction among the stakeholders. To start with, the stakeholder engagement has been an, one of the issues under the work of the Tehran Convention from the very early existence of the Tehran Convention. The project will be therefore built on those initiatives, among others, the regional and national strategies for civil society engagement. As you can see on the diagram, that's the, the figures that under the Tehran Convention, various stakeholders have been identified and engaged with. We have engaged with approximately 500 stakeholders. However, the, the lion's share of the, of the stakeholders comes from governmental and academic background. Therefore, there is a great need to expand the, the network of stakeholders, in particular non-governmental entity, uh, entities, to capture and utilize the enormous potential of the region. The project is in line with the Sustainable Development Goals, and since uh, Tehran Convention Secretariat is administrative by UN Environment, 
this project will contribute directly to SDG number 14, life below, below water, as well as SDG number 17, the partnership for the goals. So the first step of this project is expansion of the stakeholder network and a comprehensive analysis presented in a coherent way in order to map the stakeholders in the region and to present it, this information to other stakeholders. It will allow connecting the dots in the future as well as present it to other stakeholders. The next step of this activity will be focusing on capacity, build, capacity building. Four different types of capacity development will include obtaining, improving, and retaining necessary knowledge, tools, and skills. The first one is about knowledge. The, we might ask ourselves a question, how to be informed and involved in such a complex process of sustainable development? The trainings will be held to answer this question, at which regional and national mechanisms will be, provide, will be identified and described. By doing so, the group of trainers from different sectors will be formed and trained. Second dimension is about tools and uptake of information. In the current world, we all use digital technologies to access and share information. For that purpose, a Caspian Environment Information Center was set up to function as information hub providing access to reliable, up-to-date and high-quality information for policy and decision-makers. The website will be further upgraded in order to serve for expanded networks of stakeholders. The third element is about tools which allows remote and smooth communication. Being able to communicate in an effective way at the convenient time is a crucial part for any stakeholder management. For that purpose, a cloud-based platform for video remote conferences will be provided. That conference, that platform provides also a possibility for simultaneous interpretation. And using experience of one of our partners, a Zurich-based company, Interprofile, the in communication between stakeholders will be facilitated. The last part of the capacity development will be focusing on uh, uh, skills, thanks to organizing a companion modeling trainings, which are based on participatory modeling approach. The training method is an interactive process facilitated by evolutionary models used as mediating tools to support dialogue and collective decision-making. Big words, but at the end it's organized in a form of a game which helps participants to see how the ecosystem functions. In order to conduct the above-mentioned activities, the networks of stakeholders will be established. It is also planned to hold regular meetings to allow more frequent interactions. The project will further support participation of stakeholders in the Caspian intergovernmental meetings, as well as assisting bringing the international expertise into the region. An essential element of this project is also public engagement. In order to raise awareness of the environmental problems, the Caspian Sea Day will be upscaled. As Fritz mentioned before, the Caspian Sea is a celebratory event held on 12th of August in the Caspian littoral cities in order to ra raise awareness of the environmental problems that are, fa that are existing in the Caspian Sea. In parallel with these activities, dedicated events demonstrating private sector role in sustainable development of the Caspian Sea will be organized. We all know that the impact of the private sector in the recent development is more than evident. The future state of the region depends on willingness and readiness of the private sector. 
To this end, the forum will be held annually around different themes of relevance for the Caspian Sea, like pollution, climate change, sustainable tourism, or biodiversity protection. Last but not the least, small grants program in order to empower local enter entrepreneurs, NGOs, and other groups will be provided to empower them to carry out innovative small medium projects. In conclusion, the project is designed to encompass various groups of stakeholders and providing them with necessary tools and knowledge. Under this project, we hope to assist both the governmental and non-governmental actors of the Caspian Sea in boosting the sustainable development of the region. The Caspian Sea future depends on how key decisions will be made. Okay. Hello? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mateus, um, so just to repeat, you are now basically exchanging views um, with a mixture of representatives from intergovernmental organizations and representatives from the private sector and the public. I think that marks the importance of this whole day, also in the afternoon in the discussion on climate change, you will have the possibility of uh, basically inter-exchanging with these two groupings. In the afternoon we will also talk about what happened on climate change uh, between governments and so all that, and we have these presentations. So you have now been exposed to an introduction of the Greater Caspian Foundation to you, uh, and two of its collaborative activities with the United Nations seals protection and um, stakeholder engagement. So I open the floor for uh, questions and answer and exchanges. And uh, so please, uh, you want to talk? Maria, go yes. ahead. Uh, I would like to give a floor to our uh, head of organizing committee of Caspian Week of, and of the one of the, the founder of uh, Greater Caspian Foundation, uh, managing director of Integral Petroleum, Mirat Sidney Besov. He would like to say a few words about the future of the Greater Caspian Foundation and about our sustainable projects th that we have. Please, Murat. Thank you very much. Please, Murat. And then we'll, we'll open the floor. It will, it will not take too long. I will try to be very short and precise. Uh, dear guests, dear friends, dear partners, uh, thank you very much for attending uh, the forum. And I will just uh, explain, I think already Dmitry and Maria explained, uh, the goals of the Greater Caspian Foundation. But uh, the general idea is uh, to improve our life, to improve our region. It's a great region, a Greater Caspian region. Uh, all countries surrounding Caspian Sea and Black Seas. Uh, and uh, we have three goals. Uh, first goal is uh, to promote and highlight the Greater Caspian region to the big world, and also to promote the big world into the Caspian region. Uh, second, to improve relations between the people between the governments, between the states, between the business, uh, so on science uh, on science level, on the educational level, uh, and uh, here uh, in the Caspian Week and uh, for, our, for other events which we will organize, uh, you can have possibility for informal discussions, informal communication on the various levels. And the third goal to bring innovation, new technologies, and all the best what we have in the big world, uh, in the great world, to the great Caspian region. Uh, now, with regards to the future, we are uh, inviting partners uh, and the contributors to this great Caspian Foundation, uh, and from the region, and also from the big world. And all together, we can do a lot of things. It's uh, just a small initiative, but already attracting so much attention from international community, what we see. And this will go on. And uh, thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your participation. And uh, uh, together we can do a lot of things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Morad. Can I open the floor also in the presence of the founder of the foundation? Uh, do you have any questions, remarks, or suggestions? Yes, please. 
Uh, can can you also please introduce yourself when yeah, you... Yeah, Gulnara Salimova, um, the president of Uzbek Swiss Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So I wanted to ask you what kind of, um, let's say, um, roadmaps or action plans you have with regards to the um, working with the government officials um, to enable sort of economic programs to give jobs to those local populations that are focusing only on fishery, fishing and to give them some sort of alternative for the livelihood to generate their income and not focusing only on hunting for seals. So this is a big economic question because obviously the, the development of all countries that are in this Caspian region is extremely important and this is very difficult and challenging task. So what is your plan? Murat? Thank you. As I understood, you are from Uzbekistan. Oh, <laughs> yes. And uh, just uh, the great news that first ever, now we are doing third time the Caspian Week Forum. First ever, we are getting delegates from Uzbekistan this year. And we know that uh, there are a lot of changes uh, in Uzbekistan during the couple of last years. Uh, and uh, now uh, government Uzbekistan are really going to the reforms for economic economic reforms and also uh, a lot of good initiatives which they are taking. Uh, we will be happy uh, to coordinate with, with Uzbekistan government and I think now just the first way on the first step uh, that people are coming will start discussing. Uh, with regards to other countries, we have a great support from the Georgian government and uh, today in the evening we'll have a dinner with the presence of the Prime Minister of Georgia and the whole Georgian government delegation to World Economic Forum. Uh, I think they will explain maybe more. There will be Minister of Economy, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Head of Staff of the, of the Prime Minister of Georgia. In Georgia, Prime Minister is the Head of State, uh, de facto. There is a President, but President is more mainly for uh, protocol functions like in Switzerland. Uh, just to explain. <laughs> now, this year, we are getting great support from Kazakhstan, and now we are discussing a lot of new initiatives for Kazakhstan. Uh, not only to the Caspian Seal, but for a lot of things on the uh, economic side, on the new technology side. Uh, uh, we have intensive discussion with the Astana International Financial Center, with the embassy of Kazakhstan and Switzerland, and also uh, I think now we'll start discussion on the government level about all possible initiatives. And uh, slowly, slowly we are uh, involving more and more uh, states from the greater Caspian region. And I think the nearest future will have uh, really cover, good coverage for the whole region. And the uh, greater Caspian region and all countries, uh, as I told, surrounding Caspian and Black Seas, uh, from Romania, Bulgaria and Eastern Europe till Kazakhstan uh, on the east, including Uzbekistan. Although there is no any connection, border of Uzbekistan with the Caspian Sea. Uh, with regards, uh, uh, our focus is mainly uh, on the economic development uh, of the region. That's why we are, and the informal discussions which we are having here also helping uh, quite a lot because a lot of communication we see, a lot of negotiations are going on. Here also we have a meeting rooms so where people can talk, also informal networking. Uh, but for us, uh, the very important thing is connect the people. Connect the people from the region to the people from the big world. And uh, for today, this is the main goal. And from there, we are going to the various initiatives, like together with the United Nations uh, initiative. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, several initiatives on logistics. Uh, but mainly, we are connecting people here and highlighting and promoting the region. And then, uh, each government, each state of the region who would like to discuss, open discuss the potential cooperation, we are open to discuss and we are also moving in that direction. Maybe it's a quite a broad answer, but uh, uh, we are at the beginning of the big pass. So we're just starting. It's uh, difficult now to tell what concretely was done with each particular country. It will come. This will come, but uh, we are moving this. Yes, sorry. Yes. I, I would like just to add that uh, we're planning to conduct Caspian Week in each state during the year so it, it will not it will not going to be only caspian week during the was economic forum but also uh in in different countries of caspian region even to discuss this uh very important projects for each uh for each country we're discussing already with kazakhstan about arranging the caspian week forum in astana or Almaty. astana i think most probably and then slowly slowly we'll go to other countries with the same initiative 
Thank you very much for that clarification. Uh, one addition to your specific question. Um, the guardian of fisheries in the Caspian Sea region, collective guardian, is the Committee on Aquatic Bioresources, which is, as you know, consisting of the heads of the fisheries sections of the five Caspian states. Uh, in their mandate, they are supposed to take care of the issues that you raise, and they are supposed to bring change uh, to the practices in the Caspian Sea region. Uh, the international community, uh, I think, and as well as the foundation, are only there to help them, to assist them in what they want to do and the way they see forward. And so, uh, in principle, uh, on your point, uh, there are activities ongoing already. Not enough, but there are activities ongoing already under the auspices of the Committee on Aquatic Bioresources. And like uh, Murat says, and we said, uh, we are connected and we will certainly in the future look forward to seeing how we can support these initiatives. You had a question. Yes, please. Thanks. Uh, uh, Austrian NGSA, Alexander Berezikov. The question is, uh, one of the biggest uh, Caspian Sea countries is Russia. I start talking with the Russian government or Russian organization about cooperation with Caspian Sea or Caspian Week. Thanks. Murat, you want to speak? Yes, uh, Russia is very important for the Cas greater Caspian region. First of all, it's the biggest country of the region. Uh, and uh, we already started discussions about uh, potential cooperation. We already have uh, Russian delegation here on the Caspian week. Uh, last year, we had the delegation with the Council of Federation of Russia, and we were discussing a lot of things. Uh, this year also we will have uh, delegates from Russia, they already saw yesterday. On Friday will be a panel discussion about the intellectual property, which was organized by the Russian delegates. It will be a deputy head of the Agency for Intellectual Property of Russia, with a uh, very known uh, moderator called Evgeny Tarlo uh, from Russia. Uh, we already cooperate and we'll be happy to cooperate more. Uh, we have a Russian... Oh, all of us, we have a Russian house here, 300 meters from uh, Caspian Week. Uh, we are more neighbors even here in Davos. Uh, yes, uh, we are discussing on the government level. I think we'll start discussing this year, after this Caspian Week, uh, more uh, strategic approach to involve Russia into this cooperation. And uh, as I told, Russia is very important for us. Thank you. Well, in addition, uh, just let me mention that uh, Russian Federation is a formal party to the Tehran Convention, and so it participates very actively in the, in the work of the Convention. As you know, the discussions in Russia on the Caspian Sea are largely decentralized. So one of the main parties is the Astrakhan province uh, in the discussions, uh, because Moscow has decentralized many of the powers to the provinces around the Caspian Sea. You want to add? I just wanted to add that uh, at the last intergovernmental meeting of the t contracting parties of the Tehran Convention, so five Caspian littoral countries, Maria was present when she also presented the, the Caspian Week and the Great Caspian Foundation objective as well. Uh, it's true that that uh, happened on the level of the officials of the Ministry of Environment, so uh, that's one segment probably of the government, not necessarily the entire government. But indeed, I believe that the, the linkage are already existing. And in addition, uh, he knows, but we hope to be able to invite him when the ministers meet to have a discussion with them on the Greater Caspian Foundation. The only problem is that the dates of the Conference of the Party are not determined yet. The five governments are still fighting on the dates, so we cannot <laughs> give you some more formal information. Any other question? Maybe you can uh, as well tell about the feedback from the five countries about the Caspian Week during this meeting in Baku. What, because you... Well, why don't you speak, was, about, yeah, you the speak feedback, about it? The, the feedback was very positive that um, the, those governmental representatives, they said that it's good that there is a platform more on the, on the business and people side that can bring uh, really the information to the people and to, to business representatives. 
So uh, it can only work. It can work more uh, not only on the governmental level, but also on the people level, which is also important because people and business are making things work and move. So right. Yeah, this is exactly what I said in my introductory remarks. I mean, we believe that the process that has been started with the Caspi Week and the Greater Foundation is a perfect complement of the intergovernmental discussions. And we believe that, therefore, these two initiatives should be very closely linked in the future. That is basically how we see it, like I said in the very uh, beginning. And that's also what Maria said. That's one of the reasons why we try to bring each other's delegations to each other's meetings. Any further questions? Yes, please. Um, it's yes. Thank you very much for your presentation. My name is Rustan Kergauli, and I represent Fortiolo. Uh, I have a question about the fisheries um, because you've been talking about the UN perspective, and there was no discussion uh, about WTO because they have ongoing negotiations about the fisheries. It's been 18 years, and this year is going to be like final negotiation, um, and they will have to achieve the outcome about the fisheries so i would like to know your perspective on this um, on this topic because seals apparently they are very problematic and they will be included in this decision thank you well i don't have more to see our perspective uh, is from the environmental point of view so i cannot give you the full perspective from the trade point of view but as you know there is a convention which is called CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Many of the fishery species in the Caspian Sea are listed in this convention. And as you know, specifically the sturgeon for years is an issue of debate between these countries. The sanctions linked to the implementation of this convention are trade sanctions. So they are also discussed in the World Trade Organization. They interrelate. Uh, and that is one of the uh, possible entry points to arrange the fisheries issue in the context of both CITES and the World uh, Trade Organization. Uh, it is mostly a discussion about quotas, as you know. And uh, discussion about the quotas is a difficult political discussion, you know, as you know. So uh, the World Trade Organization is also struggling. The discussion on quota, in our view, but it's basically an environmental point of view, has to be based on uh, ecosystem resilience. So it has to be based on the need to preserve the species, uh, also for commercial purposes, to not lose the species. That should be the basis also in the WTO, and we are desperately trying to continuously have that discussion based on that, saying that if you do only talk about trade, you may entirely lose the species forever, uh, because there's overfishing. One of the complicating factors is, of course, and that is what uh, was presented in the seals, uh, the countries are still struggling with the poaching uh, issue. Uh, the, uh, the, basically, the commercial value of caviar is such that it encourages a lot of uh, illegal fishing. And the countries are doing a lot to prevent it, but it is difficult. Murat, you want to add to that? I think you already did a great job. <laughs> thank you. Would you like to add something? Any further questions, please? Ah. Yes, please. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm from Turkmenistan. Uh, I'm from private sector. So I just wanted to ask, is there any contribution or cooperation from Turkmen government in this particular issue, like illegal fishing or this, any cooperation well, between Caspian Week and Turkmen government? Well, Murad just told you that a lot of changes are going on now in Turkmenistan, so. It's about, was about Uzbekistan. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> oh, so, oh. Yeah, but I will start replying and then you no, can go ahead, continue. Go ahead. Yes, uh, cooperation with the United Nations, I think you can tell yeah, better than yeah. me. Yes, uh, with regards to the cooperation of Caspian Week with the government of Turkmenistan, we will now approach government of Turkmenistan for that cooperation. And uh, I'm happy that we have also delegates from Turkmenistan here. And I'm originally from Turkmenistan. <laughs> Uh, Fritz, please, now. Yes, well, uh, Turkmenistan is also a party to the convention and to many conventions, as you know. Uh, the structure 
of the government and of the negotiations in Turkmenistan is very, very solid, as you know. It, you have to follow a very distinct structure in your negotiations with the country. Uh, but Turkmenistan is very active, uh, not only in the protection of species, but also, as you know, in, in the field of tourism, for instance. There's a lot of activity on tourism going on in Turkmenistan now, which also requires a, a Caspian Sea that is clean and with sufficient uh, species in the, coastal, uh, in the coastal area. On the fisheries, uh, Turkmenistan is active in the Committee on Aquaculture Bioresources, uh, like I said, as one of the partners to try collectively to find uh, an answer to the extinction of uh, species. So it's simply one of the partners. It is very difficult to give you a very specific issue. There is a report, uh, and I will informally point you to that, uh, on the activities of all the countries in these areas. I will, and I will give you the link to the website so you can read the specifics. It goes too far on that. But just to say that uh, uh, we, we, we see a very active country in there, uh, but it is acting in its own way in the environment. The link between Turkmenistan and the other uh, uh, countries of the Caspian, of course, is also including a special link with Iran, as you know. Yeah. One small comment. Uh, I think, as you know, the Turkmenistan president recently announced the initiative uh, to do the Caspian Economic Forum during the next year in Ashgabat, in Turkmenistan. That's why this, uh, I think we will cooperate also on that aspect. Thank you. So every year... Simon. Is the order, please? Yes. Speak? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I can say a little bit about how Turkmenistan has yeah. been involved in our seal research in the past. And so between 2006 and 2010, we had funding from the British government's Darwin Initiative grant scheme. Um, so that allowed us to work with partners in all the Caspian countries, including Turkmenistan. So in that case, we were working with the Hazar Reserve and the institutes of desert flora and fauna. Um, and so the activities in Turkmenistan at that time were mainly about assessing um, habitats for Caspian seals in Turkmenistan waters and what the likely conservation threats were for Caspian seals um, in Turkmenistan. So that gave us some really good information about the baseline situation there. Um, but since um, the end of that grant in 2010, we haven't um, had the funding. Um, to have substantial input from Turkmenistan, unfortunately. Um, but we're still in touch with the partners there, and hopefully, if we can get further funding, we can bring them back um, for more substantial involvement in what we're doing. The, go the government of Turkmenistan, that's the last remark, has, a couple of years ago, started uh, to organize ecological forums uh, in Turkmenbashi, as you know. They, uh, the ecological forums take place in the presence of not only representatives of the other countries, but a huge amount of private sector and international organization representatives. I've been personally at once, and it is a very active and good exchange. You can basically do a lot of agreements there uh, during these meetings. The next meeting, I think, will be around August, September again. And we also are trying to link some of our activities to that initiative of the government of Turkmenistan. Any further questions, please? If there are no further questions, let me uh, thank, uh, well, first thank the founder of the Foundation, Murat, for being with us. Um, and ask you to maybe, if you are interested, this afternoon we will have a very interesting set of uh, workshops. The first one is on climate change and energy. We have a list of very interesting speakers. And like I said, uh, the issue is particularly relevant in the Caspian, but also globally, uh, as we are just in the aftermath of the Conference on Climate Change in Katowice in Poland. Uh, so it's a very important issue. And uh, also, I think, a very threatening issue for many people. The other one is on other threats uh, and other life uh, expectations in the Caspian Sea region, urban and rural. And you will have a diversity of uh, presentations coming to you on food production, on technologies, and on other issues uh, which can assist in, I think, uh, improving the lifestyle and improving the life of the people in the Caspian Sea region. I think you will find it very interesting. So I hope you will all be there and attending more. You want to say? Oh, thank you. I think uh, it was a great discussion, and thank you for supporting the initiative. 
and uh, all questions were answered, hopefully. Now, welcome downstairs for the Caspian food lunch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>